The EP Podcast. Heard everywhere podcast can be found. And always at the eppodcast.com. This is the EP Podcast, found everywhere podcasts can be found, and always at the eppodcast.com. My name's Chris Lanuti. I'm your neighbor. We have a packed show this week. The Beverly Bombshells are an adult female hockey team. They play right around here, and there's several members from Evergreen Park. They're down at my nine-foot homemade oak bar in my basement right here in the EP. Tim O'Connell from Brother Rice is down in my bar as well. He's going to talk about what happened this past weekend when the team went for the state championship and also some things coming up at Brother Rice this week. Donna Bailey's here, too, from the EP Library, so she'll tell us what's going on in the EP Library and see if she can answer my challenge. If that isn't enough already, Hannah's back down here. I missed you. I missed you. Where have you been? Here and there. (laughs) (laughs) Why? Why? Why do you do that to me? Why do you ask? (laughs) I don't know. I just, I know where you've been, but they don't know where you've been. I was in Louisiana. Oh, you, were, you went back home? Went back to Louisiana. Oh, okay. And then um, you were dying, clearly, last week. I was week. dying. Yes. I was I was. He, he clearly... Dying. I was sick. Yeah. I, I don't think I got... I don't know if I got into f- the, the whole story fully, but I wasn't feeling well coming back from this trip, and they had a, a medical emergency happen on the plane. And I'm on the Southwest Airlines flight, and I'm laying against the window... And I'm just like trying not to die. I'm so sick. You first of all probably shouldn't fly when you have like a head cold. No. But I was I had to go home. And we're up in the air and we're flying. We're like over northern Indiana because I could see it on my app when it happened. And she shakes me awake. She's like, she's like, she's like, something's wrong. I'm like, what? She's like, they're they're yelling for a doctor. And the lights come on in the plane. Oh, geez. And they're like, is there a doctor on board? Is there a doctor on board? They really say that. Yeah. (laughs) Is there a doctor on board? Is there a doctor on board? And now I have CPR training mm-hmm. because I was a 911 dispatcher. Right. I'm not a doctor. First thing she goes, she goes, you think you should say something? I'm like, no. <laughs> no, I should. No. I don't want to say anything. Like, if there's literally not one person on this plane that knows CPR, then fine. But we're going to wait for somebody else to pipe up. <laughs> Right away, like this one guy jumps up. He's like, I'm a doctor. I'm like, thank God. Even if he's a dentist, he's got he's more training say a than me. Of what? Right. He's got more <laughs> training than me. Even if all he does is work on teeth. And then this other woman jumps up and says she's a nurse. And I'm like, great. He's got to help her. So <laughs> he's help the first her. thing that they do is you can tell that when this is happening, the, the lights have all come on. And one of, the, one of the stewardesses, one of the flight attendants, has run to the front and she throws on a headset with like a microphone. One stayed with the person that was having the medical emergency, and one's on with the pilot. Meanwhile, the plane immediately begins to descend. And it doesn't start descending like you know a plane descends. Okay. And there's no turning. We're just going in, baby. We're like, we're like a jet fighter. We're increasing speed as we descend. So your stomach was up in your throat. He's powering up and putting the nose down at a 45-degree angle and heading in. Okay, he's declared an emergency. <laughs> that should That's, have been more uh, to me, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> like, Erica's like, what's happening? I'm like, I'm pretty sure the pilots declared an emergency and we're going in. Yeah. Because right away you could tell there was something wrong. Like, they're trying to take her blood pressure. She's unconscious. She looks like she has to be in her, in her late 20s, early 30s. She's not that oh, old. Oh, she's young. She's young. And, 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 they're, and they're trying to take her blood pressure and they're, they're, they're checking her pulse and they're, and they're trying to stamp her out of it. And, like, and then all of a sudden, like, the doctor's like, get her out of the chair, he yells. And they pull her out of the chair and they drop her right in the middle of the plane. And now she's like four or five rows up from us. And they've got her on her back on the plane. He crawls right up on her stomach because he can't go from the side and do chest compressions because he's in the aisle. Oh, yeah. And he just starts chest compressions on her right then and there. And they're putting an oxygen tank like on her on her on her face. Like for, first she was doing a thing where you pump. Like so they were doing a simulated breaths at the right point when you do CPR. Okay. You do CPR. CPR is maybe one of the most ridiculous things you ever learn. If you ever if you don't know how to do CPR, learn it. Because when I learned it, I was like, I was like, it's probably best that I knew how to do this. Okay. But when they teach you how to do it, you're supposed to give 30 compressions. Okay. And you're supposed to do it to a certain beat. And the beat they tell you to do it to staying is the alive. Bee Gees staying alive. <laughs> so when you do it, you're like, uh, 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 uh stay alive, 
stay in life. Like if I had to do this, I would have been singing it because I don't know how else to do it. I've never oh, yeah. actually done it. I've only done it on the little toy that they taught me when they and they showed me how to do it. So I, 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 I'm impressed that the guy's able to do this and he's not singing because I'm singing with him, <laughs> which must have been weird for the people around me because here's this woman who's dying and here's this guy doing a chest compression. And I'm like, uh, 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 uh stay alive. alive. And Erica's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I just started singing staying alive. <laughs> so they bring her to. And you can barely hear anything. You can just kind of pick up little words because even though I'm really close, we are going straight into Midway Airport. We were in our final descent and we were over the water coming over Soldier Field and we were going so fast. You know, how, like when they do a descent on a plane and the nose kind of comes up a little bit. Yeah. No, we were landing like an aircraft carrier. We were coming right in level the whole time. Just like we were hitting the deck on the USS whatever. What was everybody else on the plane doing? Holding on for dear life. Because you know how, like, you're landing, <laughs> they give you all these instructions like, please put your tray, tray, tray tables right. off. We'll be, we'll be around to collect your crap. They didn't have time to collect your crap. They never collected our crap. Like, all of a sudden, it was like people were just on their own. It's amazing what people will do. Like, everybody's an absolute moron when there isn't an emergency. But now there's an emergency. Oh, people are collecting their own garbage. They're throwing it in the seat bags. <laughs> they're putting up their tray tables. They're bringing up their seats. People okay? know what to do. People are turning their cell phones and their laptops off. They don't need to be told. <laughs> there was never an announcement we're coming in for a landing. Just everybody knew we were going in for a landing. It was shh, boom. We hit the, we landed. And as soon as we landed, we were going full speed. It wasn't like a normal taxi. We drove like we were driving down the interstate to the First gate at Midway. You know when you walk in through security and all the bars are there at Midway yeah. and then it splits off into the three gates and the center one is right there and it's like, man, I've never taken off from that one. That guy's right next to all of the stuff. Yeah, that's where we were. We pulled right into that one. The paramedics are waiting there. It was crazy. And then you get off the plane and you realize you've landed 20 some minutes early and we had taken off late. And we got there 20 minutes early. <laughs> and you're like, man, the last half hour, we really cooked. We really cooked in there in the last half hour. We were flying. Okay. And then you, you land. And as you're landing, they're making announcements like such and such flight is no longer at this gate. You have to go to such and such gate because they have rearranged everything well, because yeah. we took a priority. So we were. that's the first time I've ever been in that kind of experience where it happened. Now, the problem is I descended so quickly. And in all this excitement. You're sick. My ears never popped. Oh, so I didn't hear out of my left ear for about a week. Like when I did the last show, that was that day, the day before on Sunday, was the first time I could hear out of my left ear. And I was at about 90%. And I still had to go to the doctor on Monday. to, to And they put me on steroids because she's like, there is so much fluid behind your ear. And you got all messed up because of how quickly you went down. Yeah. So, I mean, it's been a thing that I've been dealing with. But I mean, that's why I told you, I'm like, oh, I'm not, there, there's no, don't come over, Hannah. Don't come over. Don't come over. Don't they just, it. they put a B, big red P for plague on the front door. You come within 20 yards, the U.S. military is going to take you down. Tim O'Connell's in here from Brother Rice. Rough one this weekend, Tim. I don't know what to say. I was sitting in Porter Cullens. The crowd was into it. It just didn't go our way. Yeah, no, thanks, Chris. Uh, excited to be here, but um, you know, it was uh, it was a magical ride, thirteen and zero. You know, obviously, uh, you know the excitement the weekend before with with knocking off your arch rival to go down state. You would have you would have liked to have finished it, of course. Uh, we had a huge crowd down there, Crusader faithful, and you know, recent grads, early grads, families, uh, people from all across, you know, the Midwest, really, even in for the game and. You know, it, it was it was tough because obviously you, you want the boys to go out on top, the coaches, the, the, you know, everybody has put in so much time and effort. And, um, you know, they gave us so much to be proud of, but it was a, it was a bittersweet ending to the to the year without a doubt. Well, I think it was great, first of all, for this area, because I think that everybody got into this. I think even if you weren't a, a Rice alum or didn't have a kid at Brother Rice, but you're in this area, like if you're in Evergreen Park or if you're in this area around where Chicago, Oklahoma is, um, the people were into this because it was kind of fun to see them go as far as they went. And it was really kind of a surprise when you look at how they had done the year before and they just kind of came out of nowhere. And I hope that they understand, you know, I, I'm sure it hurt after the guys lost and, and they get all the way to state championship and they lose. But I hope they they understand, I hope that, it, they run into neighbors that'll sit there and tell them, you know, 
I sat in a bar or I was with a bunch of people and everybody was rooting for you guys and it, you should be proud of the fact you got down there. You know, yeah, and I, 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 they never went to the state championship in the four years I was there. Right. Right. You see what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. like for all, I mean, look, you and I are older guys. <laughs> we, we sit around in the, in the park after a 16 inch softball game, you know, with the, with the boys in the neighborhood or, or, or some other event. And all these guys start telling stories about, remember that one game? They got, <laughs> they got better stories than everybody else in the neighborhood. Yeah, pretty for much. sure. They so got, even though they lost, they're going to have good stories. It's kind of like the Trump card, right? I mean, yeah, they got, <laughs> uh, you know, 13 and 0, obviously, uh, and, and like you've mentioned, the rebound. I mean, you know, we had a rough year last year, two and seven, um, a ton of injuries, starting a lot of juniors. And, um, you know, I think one of the reasons that everybody really kind of jumped on board and captivated the community with this season was the just what a likable group it is. For, you know, for, for many people, they just see the names in the paper. Um, you know, or, or, or hear a story from a neighbor or something like that. But for all the kids and all the, uh, you know, cause obviously we're, we're in a sort of a South side, uh, Catholic school ghetto here where there's, uh, right. you know, five, five or six Catholic high schools that are within reach and, you know, 15 parishes or whatever. And people can become a little territorial, but I think so many people, uh, you know, it was great to see Mount Carmel, St. Rita, St. Lawrence, uh, you know, whatever, uh, tweeting, you know, good luck to Brother Rice, Catholic League Pride, things like that. But I think from a neighborhood standpoint, so many people got so excited about the group and the success they're having because of the type of kids they are. They've heard about David O'Keefe's going to Harvard. Dylan Summers is a kid going to Cornell, like two Ivy League kids. You know, everybody, not everybody, but so many people know the Fitzgerald family. The mom runs all the classes at Treadfit and the dad's a copper. And, you know, they had two boys on the team, the twins, Joe Fitzgerald and Danny. So, I mean, there's just... It's it's kind of classic South Side. It's kind of classic, uh, you know, just our neighborhoods here where you got fingerlings into everybody and all these connections. And, and yeah, that's what made it special. It felt like it was our small town going down yeah, there. Yeah, right. That was what was fun about it. Now, you've got some big stuff going up with Rice, and I want to make sure that we got a chance to mention it um, because uh, right here in, uh, in the EP, people have a lot of choices as to where they would want to go to high school. Yep, and uh, you have uh, I think a last uh, chance open house coming up this week, and you also have entrance exam coming up, right? Yes, indeed. Yeah, this Wednesday is our last look open house, so it's something we started last year. was new, um, and you know was really well received. We had uh, we had a really good turnout. You know, we we do a couple of Sunday open houses; those are since passed, but you know sometimes during the week works better for family. So it's this Wednesday, November twenty eighth, seven p.m. Um, all you got to do is, is float us an email that you're coming by. You can see all that information on our website at brotherrice.org. And, you know, you'll get a, a, a nice individual tour from some of our National Honor Society students. We'll have all the members of our faculty, administration, and uh, staff on hand to interact and show you all the reasons that uh, Brother Rice is, you know, flourishing and still, still the largest boys' school in Chicagoland here, right here on the south side. So, and, and the entrance exam is is this weekend, right? A week away? Is that what it is? Yeah, the entrance exam is this Saturday, December first, um, eight o'clock for all eighth graders. And you know, we're really encouraging families to you know that are on the fence with public school. Hey, go through the process. You know, take the entrance exam, go through the process. Hopefully, they can get some you know financial assistance, and um, you'll see why so many people love being a part of the Brother Rice family. It's you know you got that perfect balance of Elite academics, you know, strong extracurricular athletic, uh, other opportunities, all based around a, a great spiritual atmosphere in what is really, a, a, you know, a, a big school, you know, resources with a small school feel. We have that family atmosphere, and, and it's never on more display than a weekend like we just had here. Right, and it made me go out and find. I had to go dig down here in the basement. I found my my uh, my hat from 1995. I was a yep. class of 1995. I found my my brother Rice hat. It was a little wrinkly. Yeah. You know, it said marching band on the back. <laughs> I didn't play in the football team. I, I was yeah, in the marching that's all band. Good. Right, right. And I, and I had my hat, I had my ball cap on while I was watching them play the other night. And, uh, you know, I, but it, it gave me a sense of pride to, to, to be there. And seriously, you. You uh um you make sure you pass along to those guys. Everybody's really proud of them, and I, and and yeah. we're all we're all proud of them. You come up a little short, it happens sometimes, but th- I'm sure they got some memories they're going to keep for the rest of their life. Yeah, I know they do, and 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 you know there were obviously a few tears shed last night, as you would expect when you know you're dealing with young men that have put so much time and energy and passion into this. Um, but I know that they know deep down that 
you know, you, you could make the argument it's the best season in Rice history. That you know, we've had a state champion before, but they had a couple losses. You know, I mean, this was really complete domination until the you know until until the last few quarters. You right, know? So, we could keep these kids all back in high school for one more yeah, year. Yeah, right. Start failing these kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd like to look into the uh, red shirt opportunity, start, I guess, right? Start red shirt and fail on some of these kids. Let's, That's let's, the problem. Let's they're build too, up a little bit. They're too good as students. <laughs> it's the middle of the show song. 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 Chris had nothing to put here, so he put this song. It's the middle of the show song. I got a hockey team in the basement. I got a hockey team sitting at my bar. I got Obi, Lupa, Lori, and Shorty along with Coach Brian from the Beverly Bombshells. They play over in Morgan Park, but they, I think all of them except for one, an EP girl. And that's why I said that I was going to have them on here. And Obi, you're the one that uh, that put this together because you've already been on the show before. That's right, Chris. Right. And I said I was afraid to put you into my basement because you, you keep a you keep a banana in a coffin. I'd be scared and, too. Yeah, you keep a banana in your in a coffin, and and uh, and I I was like, there's absolutely no way this is going to happen. But then you were like, I'm going to bring a whole hockey team, and I was like, well, this could go one of two ways. One, she I got safety numbers, or two, they're all nuts because they're a hockey team. And I'm starting to think that it might be too. Lori, why don't you have a nickname? They don't like me very much. They don't much. like you? Why don't they like you? <laughs> What's with the Marilyn Monroe voice? <laughs> you know the you know the the best thing about this. Trying to talk sexy to the, mic. the the best thing about this, the best thing about this whole thing is that the amount of people that come down here for the EP podcast and I'm like, hey, you know, it's a bar. You want to have something? And like every once in a while, I could twist somebody's arm. The hockey team, there's drinks lined up all down the bar. Like this is great. I love this. I'm like, and they still have practice. And they're, right. they're like, ah, I'll make practice better. Like, uh, they'll, be, they'll be more hitting. Um, and now, on a, on a women's hockey team, do you think, and maybe Coach Brian can say this even more, because I, I imagine if you ever, you probably played hockey if you're coaching hockey, I right? Yeah. Who's more vicious, the guys or the girls? Um, probably the ladies. They, they, yeah, they can be pretty vicious. They can they, be a little, right? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they drink, <laughs> they swear, they do everything the guys do pretty much. What are you effing talking about? <laughs> oh, what are you, yes. Now, here's a, here's a question. Here's a question. Because this is the thing. I don't understand where it comes from hockey players. Like, like my son, I mean, I, he's just like any other like little boy. And he's played sports in, in other leagues. Like he's played baseball and he's played basketball and everything else like that. Right. But I... I would never send my wife into their into the hockey locker room ever. I would never do that. I mean, like, they, I mean, and it's just 10, 10 year old humor. You know what right. I'm saying? But like, for example, my kid's sitting inside of the the locker room, and one of the kids goes, "Hey, do you guys watch Stranger Things?" And the other kid goes, "No, I don't watch Stranger Things." And he goes, "What's Stranger Things?" And some other guy walks by and goes, "Hey." You guys keep your eyes off my stranger thing. And then the whole thing oh, went, the whole giggling. thing went, right. they're 10 years old. <laughs> yes. They're ten, I mean, it, it, I don't know what it is about hockey locker rooms or hockey players, but they're like, I'm, I'm flying around on blades. I'm playing on a hard surface. I'm carrying a weapon and I'm going to talk dirty. That's right. That's and right. The, the women are like that too. Is that what, is that what it's like in the locker room? There's a lot, of, a lot of dirty talk. I've never heard so many women drop the F-bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Donna Bailey is here. And as promised on last week's program, before we get to what's going on in the EP library, I intend to take Donna up on her challenge that if I give her any kind of subject, anything, she can find a book for me in the EP library. (laughs) Come on. You're mocking me. Let's go. You don't think I can do this? No. It is now time to stump Donna. All, All right. right, Donna. Bring I'm going to give you a softball one here. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm going to start off with just something a little ridiculous, mildly ridiculous. Let's see how quickly you can come up with a book. Okay. 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 All right. Here we go. I'm looking for. I'm looking for a book about zombies. Now, don't don't rush because okay. that's just the beginning. Okay. okay. I'm looking for a book about zombies. Okay. Let's make it a zombie love story. Okay. All right. And let's set it in the future. Zombie future love love story at the Evergreen Park Library. You tell me there's a book for every interest. Okay. I challenge you to find me that. Zombie love story set in the future for an adult. Obviously, you're an adult. 
because it makes a difference. We I should have thrown a dope young, there, too, because you know, even if it's a love story, you want some of the juicy stuff. I got oh, you. No. All right, kids, yeah. The kids, the let's young adults juicy. are into it, Let's get it juicy. Too. All right. Okay. All right. Well, let's, get, me... let's get it. Let's get to 50 Shades of uh, Zombie. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. Well, one of the ones I'm thinking of right off the top of my head is the Dead series by Jesse Peterson. It's a couple of wacky zombies who meet and fall in love and get married. Zombies. They're just a couple of crazy kids. Come on, you're making this no, up. No, just a no. This is a real ser- this is a series. This a series. It's a series, yeah. How many books are in this series? Um, so far there's two, but I don't know how much right. far it's going to go All out. Right. Well, yeah. yeah, because I mean, this is pretty ridiculous. So, so you, th- these are two zombies that are in love. They're in love. They get married. Is it futuristic? It's futuristic. Are All spaceships? of a sudden are uh, not Should've yet. Been. I should have thrown spaceships. Not yet. Oh, I'm working with it. God, come on. Yeah. My brain's okay. trying to churn here. I haven't had lunch yet. All right. Okay, so they get married. But all of a sudden, they start quarreling a lot. They're just, just on each other's yeah, back you don't, all the you time. And zombie. you don't want to tick off your yeah, zombie no, wife you don't. You don't. or husband. You wake up, she's eating your face. Yeah, so well, actually, that's pretty good that you brought that up because they start going to a marriage counselor. And they're starting to see some weird things because the marriage counselor rips out the throat of the clients that are there before them. So they're starting to say, there's something going on Do here. Do they not realize they're zombies? No, they know they're zombies, but it's like the zombies aren't acting according to the way they normally do. And they start noticing other things, and they start to realize it's going to be a zombie apocalypse. But they're already zombies. But the zombies are turning on each other, and they're going to kill each other. So now they've got to join together and work together. What? And they're repairing their marriage as they try and fight this onset. Okay, fine. You win. You win. You win. Fine. Fine. You, you win this round. <laughs> Tell me what's going on at the EP library. This okay, week. I am so excited. The that is the most noon... ridiculous thing I've ever heard about in my life. What is the name of that book again? <laughs> it's a series. It's called The Dead Series. The it's Dead by Series. Je- uh, by Jesse Peterson. Jesse Peterson, you sick man. Or is that a woman? Woman. Woman. Jesse Peterson, you sick woman. Anyway, go ahead. Okay, I'm really excited. I want everyone to look up at the, the microphone here. Ta-da! The new newsletter is out, and it, it covers December, January, and February, and it is packed with a ton of things to do. A couple of things I want to talk if about. You tell people every, if you tell people to go get that, then what do they got to listen to the segment for? We mail it to you, and it, but I will tell you, if you didn't get it in the mail, come right. in the library, we'll give you another copy. Okay. It's a way for people to make track of what they want to go Next to. Next newsletter, I want a picture of you and me with our microphones uh, on the newsletter. Come on. We'll try it. Let's make it happen, Donna. I know who to talk to, but All I'm right. not so sure. Donna and Chris on the newsletter. Think about it. I'll think about okay. it. Okay. All right. Go I'll ahead. I'll think what, about so it. So what do we got going on this so, week? Well, one of the reasons why it's so important that we mail this out and give it to people is because there's some things you have to uh, register in advance. Okay. And some of the programs fill up really quickly. So that's why we make sure Oh, there's people... kids in headphones on the front of it. Yes, indeed. Listening to the EP podcast. Well, no. Look they're... at how cute they are listening to the EP podcast. Podcast. They're playing a game. That's so sweet. They're not playing a game. They're listening to us. No, they're playing I'll a game. I'll believe what I want to believe. Okay. Anyway, so the new newsletter is out. And a couple of things I want to talk about. This is starting at the end of November. So we're going to go into that. We have a couple of really great displays coming up. I don't know if you guys know this, but the Evergreen Park Community High School artists, the students there, are incredible artists. And every year, we, we put up all their artwork. And it is amazing. I, this is stuff that's like, you can't tell me a teenager created this. This is like master artwork. You've got to come in and take a look and see what these kids have done. You, it will knock your socks off. You'll notice a trend going on in, in, at the library because December is going to be filled with wonder. And by that I mean the book Wonder by R.J. Palachi. We're going to start on Saturday the 1st. We're going to have a really cool interactive movie. The kids are going to watch the movie, the teens and tweens. And then it'll be like kind of that Rocky Horror thing where if they say jump, the kids got to jump. Yeah, it's going to be really interactive so okay. that they can watch it. Okay, also on the third, we're calling all teens and tweens who want to help paint the window of the teen room in the style of the book Wonder again. See the theme we're going with? And you can also earn up to an hour of service credit. And that's really important for the high school students that want to get into the, to the Honor Society. We also have coming up starting on the 27th, and that's also going to go through to January, I think, 2nd, the... The Evergreen Park Historical Commission is going to have a Christmas display of all things that were like kind of pertinent to Evergreen Park at the Christmas time. So that's going to be up there for, for you to look around at too. So we don't, just, we don't just have books and things up, but come up and see what's going on in Evergreen Park and what the residents of Evergreen Park did in the past and are doing in the future. You don't just have books about zombies turning into even worse zombies? Uh, yes, we do have that. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. You know what? 
Next week, I'm coming back with something stronger. Okay. You've ruined zombies for me. You and The Walking Dead. <laughs> Is she putting on a voice? Is that what's going on? Is she putting on a voice? Is this not a normal voice? <laughs> Sam, come on, come on. Rating, the ratings are up. <laughs> Lori, I just want to, just, with the sultry voice, I just want to lean and be like, this is Lori from the Bombshells. This is and you're Lori from the Bombshells, the and we need the participation. Bomb. So if you are interested in joining Ladies Hockey. We're always, look, we're like always looking for women's hockey players, and we're always looking for sponsors. Um, Please join women's hockey at <laughs> www.bombshells. <laughs> BeverlyBombshells.com. There you go. Is, is this for the husbands? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who are you trying wow. to attract? Come on. You're going to have like 10 discuss. coaches volunteer now. I want, when we're, when, we're, when we're done, you can cut some liners for the show. I think my ratings will go off. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So getting back to the fact that they're, they have filthy mouths and, uh, and, yeah. and they're chippy hockey players, these oh, women. Dear, right. Fun. Okay. So, <laughs> the, so, so, um, so you think that maybe they're a little bit more, little more vicious while they're on the ice? They could be. Yeah, right? there's plenty of plenty of swearing and uh, and chippiness and you know. Well, just we have an intense, guys. we have an intense rivalry with one of the teams in our in our league in our the women's Central Hockey League. Really, and that game tends to get pretty chippy. Now everybody looks, you know, people look for things to do, especially as you get, you know, you get older, you got kids and stuff like that. This is your thing. If somebody was a hockey fan but had never played hockey before or had done some skating but hasn't done something like what you're doing, I, I know they can't pick up a stick and, and just do it, okay? Yes, I mean, yes it, actually they can. Yes, they can. They can. Yes, we have three levels on the Beverly Bombshells. We have beginner, intermediate, and uh, advanced. So any level of hockey player can come join us. So somebody can just be like, I've always just wanted to play some hockey, and they'll, they can go out there and almost learn while they're playing. Yes, we even have some extra gear that people can borrow. Like it, we, we'll, we'll help people out. We want them. Everybody should play hockey. Really? really? Chris, you should join our co-ed team. You have a co-ed team? <laughs> yes, where yes. we play co-ed. I would, well. I, I'll play on the co-ed team. That's there you fine. go. He's I'm, I'm all, all right. in right. the co-ed team. Yeah, I'll do it. Just recruited Sign us. me up. I'll go play on the co-ed team. I, I, I'm a little bit nervous about, like I said, the women. That would probably knock <laughs> me over, but I'll go play on the co-ed team. And it, what is it now? Is it really? It's co. They, I can't believe they have a co-ed hockey team. Is they it do. Like, it's yeah, out of Morgan, Morgan Park. Park. Is it got yeah. the same kind of rules, or is it like you it's, know? It's no checking. Obviously, yeah, I would think no checking. Stuff yeah. happens, but okay. uh, what happens unfortunately is the first season it started, we had a decent amount of ladies in the in you know in the uh, playing with us, and then what happened is after the first season you saw it kind of change to become a little more like a men's C league. So now you're seeing people bring in, like we played one team. They have two guys who played college hockey basically. Yeah. Right. So it's like, it be, it came, it was supposed to be for, for beginners. It's supposed and just to be for of, fun. Exactly. Right. Now it's becoming novice, more yeah. and more common. You know, that's the worst right. thing about it too, is that you, it, it's hard to keep your leagues like non-competitive. Like right. I play in a, I play in a 12 inch softball league for, over at Redeemer. Right. Okay. And they've done their best to like make sure that they don't all of a sudden have a bunch of twenty two year old kids yeah. that used to play baseball out there. Because first of all, all the fat old guys would look terrible. <laughs> it's not fun anymore. And the guys were all pulling like we had the worst injuries the year that there were like a lot of young guys because everybody's trying to prove they can do it too. Right. And they're getting hurt. And this year, far less young guys. Like I think it was like they sent in their application, it was like, now we're full. Denied. Like, You're denied. <laughs> this is going back to being an old guy league where we sit around, we drink beer in, in between innings. So I, I can get that. I understand it. But it must be fun to be able to get out and 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 play in, in something like this and, you know, the camaraderie of it. I mean, I, how often do you guys see each other in a week? All <laughs> the time. Yeah. And, 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 and if I can be an advocate for this one, um, I absolutely love the friendship that I have developed with these ladies. They are um, – so close and near and dear to my heart and they've adopted my family as they they are their own um my my children play hockey i play hockey and um this is um for us as a hockey family um not only are my children on the ice about six days a week i am on the ice six days a week and it's um become something that is our everyday life, and without it, I, I, I you know, um, I, I, I don't know if our our life would be normal. This is the most fantastic thing that I've ever experienced in the friendship, and the camaraderie, and I express that to my children 
um, when they play with their teammates and how they behave in the locker room. It's so imperative to their development and it's been imperative in, in my adult life. Um, it's truly a, a family. Laura, you're trying to make me cry before. <laughs> is that what your plan is? Yeah, yeah, like some you started off with, you started off with, you started off with a sultry voice, and now you're just trying to make me cry. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> another show is wrapped up. Another show's in the books. Another show is wrapped up. And then by the looks, it's going to be a good one. And we'll see you next week. And the nude is baby. Another show is wrapped up, another show is wrapped up, another show is wrapped up, and it's in the books. Another show is wrapped up, another show is wrapped up, and by the looks, it's gonna be a good one. New Year's Basement, oh, broadcast basement, the New Year's Basement, the broad basement. Slancha. That was like Dropkick Murphys or something, right? I felt like it. Thanks, Chris. Lori, 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 say say something sultry like "Listen to the EP podcast" or something. Just give me, give me the. This is this is Lori from the Bombshells. You're listening to the EP podcast. This is Lori from the Bombshells, and I really hope you're listening to the EP podcast. Thank you. The EP podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always at the eppodcast.com.